Book two, chapter 15, Inspiration. Back in school, everyone is talking about the schoolyard. Mr. Willis asks us how we felt after we gave the grade six student all the notes. It felt good to be kind, a voice says. Mr. Willis continues by saying that kindness goes a long way and when it is combined with compassion for others, it is really powerful. It makes one feel good because it is good. At recess on the bench, I tell Limerick and Charles a story of the elephants. I am very interested in the subject. I am wondering if people still kill elephants for the trade of ivory. I'm going to ask Melba at the shelter, I declare. Maybe there is an elephant foundation to help keep the elephants safe. I know people protect wildlife. An elephant should be part of that. Limerick and Charles say they will help me research as well. They say that there will be something about it on the internet. We are very content, sitting together, looking out towards the playground, making sand circles with our feet. Limerick still sits between us. We like it that way. We are good. I am feeling quite sure that we will be a part of Charles's first book. After some time, we notice the grade six girl with a group of her friends. She keeps looking over at us. Limerick is concerned she will come back to bully us. The grade six student starts walking over towards us and Charles mumbles, it will be okay, Limerick, you are with us. We sit staring at the girl as she approaches the bench. I, I want to apologize, she says, not looking at any of us. I, I want to say I'm sorry for being a bully. Nobody likes a bully and I didn't like myself when I was being mean. It's okay, Charles says, you are welcome to join us. He then makes a motion showing that he will move over for her. No, no thank you, she says. I just wanted to say how sorry I am and to tell you it won't ever happen to you or to anyone again. Limerick looks up and catches the girl's attention with her kind eyes. Thank you for apologizing. I really hope you will join us for lunch one day. The girl nods, holding her head down. She turns away and walks back to the group that has been watching her every move. I am really interested in helping the elephants. When I get to the shelter, I ask Melba if she knows anything about poaching and killing elephants for their ivory tusks. Yes, Finnan, it still goes on. Years back, it was worse. There are several animals that are killed to use parts of their body for profit. I didn't know that, I mumble under my breath. Finn, there are several foundations that prevent these killings from happening. Foundations that support and preserve wildlife. I know of a few myself. I send donations on behalf of the shelter, but it never seems like enough. What if we had a fundraiser, I ask, one for the shelter and to support wildlife? I am sure that my class could help. We are really good at organizing great events and Charles always comes up with great suggestions. That's a great idea, Finn. I will leave it with you, but please know that I will help you in any way I can. It will be a very kind and compassionate thing to do and we can all feel good doing great deeds. Okay, Melba, I will talk with my teacher and with Charles. Oh, Finn, that's wonderful. You are an inspiration and such a help to all the animals that are here and now in the wild. You should be very pleased. I am, Melba, but I know that so many others help in other ways. My contribution may be small, but every little bit helps. It sure does, Finn. It sure does. I tend to all the animals, clean out cages, build dishes, walk the dogs, 
It is still so much fun, and it does feel really good to help others, especially little hearts that need attention and good care. On my way home, I walk by the old man's house. Today, he is sitting on his porch again. I wave to him as I pass by. Young man, please come over to say hello. As I walk up his laneway, he asks where the circus animals are. I chuckle. Three days a week, I volunteer at the animal shelter. I'm just on my way home. That's great, Vinin. Yes, and I have some good news. I want to help the elephants, so I'm going to ask my class if they would like to have a fundraiser. The money will be used for both the local shelter and for the protection of wildlife. The lady at the shelter tells me that it's not just elephants that are killed for profit. The old man studies my face. He looks puzzled. Would you really help the elephants? He asks. Yes, sir. Even if it's only a small donation to a wildlife foundation, every little bit helps. Please let me know about your fundraiser. I would like to help you. I could donate something, perhaps my time or some money. Thank you, sir. As soon as I know, I will let you know. By the way, sir, what is your name? He looks deep into my eyes and ponders, as if he doesn't want to share his identity. I can just call you sir, if that is more suiting, I say quickly. I like sir. Yes, Finnin, please, just call me sir. Okay, sir, I say, nodding my head. Do you like chocolate chip cookies? I love chocolate chip cookies. I don't eat them often, he says as he pats his belly but I do love them. Okay, I say with a smile. I'd best be on my way. My mom worries if I'm not home on time. Off I go, rushing as I make my way home. I am near out of breath by the time I arrive. Mom, I holler as I enter the front door, down the hallway to the kitchen. She is sitting at the table looking at the local newspaper. Hello, Finnan. You look excited about something. Yes, Mom, I want to have a fundraiser for the elephants and other wildlife animals. I have spoken with Melba and will be raising proceeds for the shelter as well. That's a great idea, Finnan. I will talk with Mr. Willis tomorrow and maybe the class can also do something. That sounds really good, my mom says with excitement. Oh, I wanted to ask you, Mom. Could I take some cookies to the man that lives in House 29? He is the one who inspired the fundraiser, and I don't think he has anyone to bake him cookies. What is his name, Finnan? I don't know, Mom. I asked him, but he decided that it would be best to just continue calling him Sir. That's unusual, my mom says. I thought so too, but he seemed content with me not knowing. Okay, Finnan, I'll prepare you a gift of cookies to share. I would feel better, though, if we knew his name. Maybe, Mom, you could walk with me. We could give him the cookies together. That's a nice idea, Finnan. Tiernan would have to come, too. Sure, Mom, we could take Skye and Hemingway for a walk, and hopefully the man will be sitting out then. After some thought, I say, can we go now? He was just sitting on his porch a little while ago. I would love to go for a walk. I'll get Tiernan and you get the other two. I notice Mum has dressed the two in purple handkerchiefs. I just shake my head and chuckle at how cute they look. Tiernan is really happy to go. He has stuffed his pockets full of dog treats and has decided to dress the part of circus ringleader. Dear Nin, it isn't raining. Your rubber boots are going to be warm. They're not rubber boots. They are circus boots. Okay, my mom says. Hemingway up on my shoulder, Sky eager to lead the way. Wait, my little brother yells out. Let's bring a hoop. Dear Nin, 
that's going to be clumsy to walk with, my mom suggests. Still, we know there is no stopping the circus show, and off he goes to grab a hoop. Okay, we are ready, my mom says when Tiernan comes back. She has a big smile on her face. It's not often that we walk together, so it's nice to share today. Mom has a package of cookies. She keeps extra in the freezer for moments just like this. Cookies represent the feeling of home, and my mom likes to make sure people feel right at home, even strangers. Sure enough, the old man is still on his porch. He waves in disbelief when he sees us walking up his laneway. Sir, I would like you to meet my mom and my little brother, Tiernan. He studies our faces. He notices that Hemingway and Sky Charles are dressed the same once again. I think this must be the circus leader, he says with a grin to Tiernan. I am, Tiernan replies in a very loud and proud voice. I brought my hoop. Would you like to see a trick? Why, yes, ringmaster, I would love to see a trick. I would love to watch a circus act today. My mom giggles as Tiernan gets ready in the front yard. The old man is smiling ear to ear. I think he is surprised with the company and now a show in his front yard. I untie Sky. He knows exactly what to do. What a sight to see. My little brother with his cowboy hat on and his rubber boots. He sounds his whistle and Sky gets into position. We all start to clap as Sky makes his first jump through the hoop. He circles around quickly to do it again. This time he jumps higher, then again and again. It's like he knows he is center stage with all eyes on him. We cheer and laugh. When they are done, my brother awkwardly picks up Sky and takes a bow. I place the leash back on Sky and sit on the porch steps with my mom. We brought you these cookies, my mom announces, as she hands over the pretty wrapped parcel. He holds the cookies in his hands, and I can see that his hands are trembling. He looks at my mom with a tear in the corner of his eye. I haven't eaten homemade cookies in a long while, he says. Thank you for such a kind gesture. My mom places her hand on his arm and says, You are most welcome and I am sure more cookies will make their way here. We all chuckle and he starts asking my little brother about the circus. Tiernan feels so important answering the questions in his baby dog voice. I must say, my little brother is cute in every way. His heart is really big and it shows. He is very kind to others, be it a person or an animal. The man asks, Finnin, what if you were to put on a show and have the little ringmaster here show off his circus? Maybe other dogs could come. Perhaps you could have a petting zoo, but with dogs and cats. That's a great idea, sir. I will ask my teacher and my class when I see them tomorrow. We won't take up any more of your time, my mom says as she extends her hand to shake his. He places his hand in hers and lifts it to give my mom a kiss on the back of her hand. Thank you for sharing such kindness with me, the old man says. You have truly spoiled me with a sense of family today. Cookies remind me of home. My mom and I look at each other, knowing my mom had just said that. Perhaps one evening you would like to come to visit our home maybe for dinner and some more entertainment. Looking at my mom with kindness, he replies, I would greatly appreciate the company of your family. He tips his hat and away we go. As we walk home, my mom says to me that she senses he once had a family, a home, filled with other people. I believe he now lives alone, I say. I agree, Finn, I agree. When we arrive home, we find Paige sitting on the back steps, crying into the palms of her hands. Paige, what's wrong? 
my mum asks, rushing over to her. I'm okay, mum. I just don't understand people sometimes. What happened, Paige? My little brother asks in his innocent voice. Trying to sound cheery, he then asks, Would you like to see a trick? No, no thank you. Not right now, she says softly, wiping the tears from her cheeks. Mom, why do I have to wear these stupid clothes? My mom looks at her in disbelief. Paige, your clothes are not stupid. In fact, you chose your clothes when we were shopping. No one is making you wear anything. But mom, Paige continues in a frustrated voice, these aren't designer clothes like my friends. My clothes don't have the labels that theirs have. Oh my, mom says, becoming aware of what is really going on. My mom is smart. She knows about people and what to say. On this day, Paige is going to receive answers she wouldn't expect to hear. Let me get this right, Paige. You are crying because the lovely clean clothes you are wearing, the clothes that you picked out for yourself, are not good enough for you? Paige is hesitant because my mom's tone is kind, but stern. I'm just trying to get a clear picture here, Paige, my mom continues. Do you believe your friends are better than you because of the clothes they wear? Yes, Mum. I guess I do. Nobody is making fun of them. Who is making fun of you, Paige? They are. So let me get this straight. The ones who have designer clothes are making fun of you because you're not wearing the same thing? Because you aren't copying their behavior? It's not like that, Paige says, now with a raised voice. I know it isn't best that Tiernan and I stay around for the rest of the conversation. I get Tiernan to put away his circus items and tie Sky under the tree so he can rest. Paige, let me understand you clearly. Why did you choose the clothes we bought? Paige just stares ahead and says, Mom, these clothes are yucky. I don't want to wear them. You took me to the wrong store. Nobody shops at that store. Paige, my mom says, taking a deep breath. I took you to a store that has very nice clothes. You selected what you wanted off the rack. It was your decision to choose what you are wearing. Mom, I just don't like these clothes anymore, Paige yells. Paige. Please do not raise your voice at me. Why don't you like your clothes? Paige, now frantic, shouts, Because they are not designer clothes. Can't you see, Mom? They are not good enough. All my friends wear better things. My mom studies her face, notices how upset she is. My mom understands how Paige is feeling. Paige, there is nothing wrong with what you are wearing. The clothes are very suiting to you. You were extremely happy when you bought them. Now that someone has said something demeaning to you about how you look, you don't like what you have. You really don't think they are good enough for you? Mom, can we buy some better clothes? Better clothes, my mom says. What makes you think their clothes are better? They don't seem better to me. Not if when the person wears them, they feel they have the right to belittle another. Is that what a label on clothing means, Paige? That when you wear designer clothes, you suddenly become more special than others? Paige sits quietly, knowing she has pushed my mom, but also knowing my mom is making sense. Mom, please, let's just get some new clothes. So what then, Paige? You get new clothes so you can be like someone else? Someone who thinks they are a better person? You want to get new clothes so you can fit in? No way. My mom is firm but loving. Paige, you are more than your clothes. You are more than your appearance. Kindness comes from within, 
not from a designer label. It is obvious mum is agitated. It is obvious Paige wants all new clothes. It is obvious that I am happy that jeans and a t-shirt work for me. Paige, allow your friends to wear what they want. Be happy in the clothes you have. Be thankful that you have clothes you have. Clothing doesn't make you who you are. Wearing designer clothes only shows others that one can afford luxury clothing. It doesn't make the person any better. Paige sits quietly on the steps. She ponders what my mum has said. Paige, make your own way. Find your own style. There is no need to copy anyone. No need to be like the others. Why would you want what they want when you are your own person? Paige shrugs her shoulders. Don't allow anyone to take away your happiness because of what you wear. Be your own person. Know that you are more than your clothes. Your friends should do the same. Paige says, I guess so. Create your own style. Be who you are and work with what you have. Take what you have and be grateful for all that you can create. Be unusual, but be kind. Find your own style, but don't ever feel like you are better than others. For once you believe you are better because of the brand name you wear, you take away from who you really are. After a short pause, my mum continues on. You know, Paige, I have an old trunk upstairs in the attic, clothes that I wore back when I first met your dad. Why don't we go take a peek and see if you like anything in there? Nobody will have the same thing, that's for sure. It may not be designer brand, but it will allow you to feel good about what you are wearing. I had lots of clothes, Paige, and I've kept most of it tucked away. We can even check out the second-hand stores to look for some vintage-style clothing if you'd like. Mom, Paige says loudly, a second-hand store. I'm not going to be caught in a second-hand store. Paige, why not? Do you think you are better than the other shopping there? Paige ponders. She realizes she is acting just like her friends did when they made her feel badly. She is judging others for having less than she has. She sees that her behavior is unkind, but just because she buys her clothes new, it doesn't make her better than those who buy their clothes secondhand. Paige discovers that she's being judging, just as her friends had placed judgment on her. Okay, Ma, let's take a peek at this treasure chest of yours, she says in a far more cheerful manner. Great, I can't wait to see what we can find for you. 